everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me, and this is the place where women who are aging beautifully come to be inspired. And my guest today is Josephine Lowland. Josephine has worked in the fashion industry for many years. Back in the 70s, she worked at Browns and Jaeger, and then had her own consultancy, image consultancy business for years. 10 years ago, though, she made a dramatic shift and she opened her own website called Chic at Any Age. And the idea was to inspire women in their 60s and 70s and beyond to feel good about fashion and to, to, to love style, enjoy it. Now, she's uh, got a simple wardrobe herself, but she loves to accessorize with scarves and colors and also to take advantage of what is in her wardrobe. So, Josephine, we're going to talk about shopping your own wardrobe today. Fantastic. I mean, it really is a, it, it's, it's a fa passion of mine. I don't think we need to be buying new things all the time. And in fact, I ran a series on the blog, literally entitled Shopping Your Closet or Shopping Your Wardrobe, depending if you're which side of the pond you are. You got confused about the closets and wardrobe bit. And it's been the most popular series. I mean, women love it. And I often get comments to say, thank you so much. I've got that in my wardrobe and I never thought of putting it with that. Yeah. So... Well, no, it's a big, it's a big uh, issue because for two reasons. One is people don't like to spend a lot of money. They've got lots of other things that they can spend their money on when you get older, travel and fun things. But also there's a, an ethic now about recycling and upcycling and, you know, just yes. not wanting to waste clothing. It's just like fast fashion is, comes and goes. But tell us how you approach then shopping your closet, as you, are, you say in England. <laughs> Well, I think you start, you start with the basics. You need to get a wardrobe that works for you. I'm a great believer in investing as much as your budget will allow for the good basics, especially jackets, coats, trousers. They right. need to fit you well. They need to be cut well. They need to work for you. They're the things that are going to be, you know, get the hardest of wear. So yeah. it is worth paying that extra bit of money for good quality fabric. And then looking after your clothes. Yes. And also, I think color is important. You choose whichever neutral color is going to be the, the, the building blocks for your wardrobe. Right. I mean, person, I used to go for a lot of black. I've moved a little way of black. I do wear it in the evenings, but I now prefer the navies or the grays. So those are my two colors that I work for. And you know, I've got so many navy trousers. Gosh, I could—I um, don't know what to do with them. But you but know, I've been them for years. Yeah. No, navy is great on you, and I think when you get when your hair is grey like yours, you, you wear it beautifully. The grey is actually lovely with navy. I mean, I still wear a lot of black, and I've never been a navy girl. And I think you're kind of always almost in two camps about black or navy. But um, that's a really good advice, though, to have a basic uh, wardrobe, good quality, and then play. So and then might, play. Yeah. So tell us about the playing bit. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going out to lunch. I've got the black, na the navy pants. I've got the navy top or whatever. What do I do next? Well, if you're really brave, you can add a really zingy bit of jewelry. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> in your evening, you know, depending how sort of extrovert you are. Uh, I often wear this in the evening, but I have worn it in the day. So, so cute. you know, a good necklace. Anything that draws the eye up towards your face, earrings, a bit tricky now. I've got the, the headphones in, but I often wear larger earrings. Yes. That works. I mean, I think it's about relaxing and having a bit of fun. You know, okay. don't take it too seriously. Go back to that necklace. Let me see that again. I love it. What, the big, yeah. Yeah, where did you get that? It's so Well, cool. I knew you were going to ask that. Um, it comes <laughs> from my, as we you know, we, I spend quite a lot of time in France. And this was made by a lovely lady. She makes it all by hand. She sells them her pieces in the on the local stall in our tiny little village. I think she travels around to other villages. And she's a real artisan. I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, I've got one that I bought at Zara, which I always, when I wear it, people always say, oh my goodness. And it's, it's not nearly as beautiful as that, but it's the same idea of kind of like you said, just go crazy a bit. Who's judging? Mm. No yes, judging. exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, you can push the boat out. I think it's, it's time to have fun. And as for hats, well, get me started on my hats. I just <laughs> love hats. Now, it's a love or hate. Oh, like Some people one. do not like the hats. I've got a hat yes. here. Hold on a minute. I've got my hat here. I've got a hat too. We wear hats together. Okay. Yeah. I just okay. love hats. Oh, okay. yeah. That's a lovely one. Oh, fantastic. I mean, this is a winter one. I've got lots of straw hats for summer because <laughs> also, you know, they do protect your skin, actually. Yeah. Wearing a hat 
keeps and your scalp. The sun and your scalp. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So <laughs> I'm all for hats. See, this is the thing though. You, when you don't have an open heart and mind to your wardrobe, to your closet, there will be things sitting there that you will never pick up because you just don't think, oh, I'm going to put that necklace on. You know, I'm going to just have fun with it today. I mean, I yes. bought um, a little bag. I was in uh, London at the, not London, in uh, Scotland at the charity shops and I bought this little bag. It's, oh, it's gorgeous. Isn't this cute? Oh, and, and that is I, so gorgeous. No, it was like you know, three pounds or something crazy. But I it sat in my closet forever and then I took it out and I wore it and I got so many, oh, isn't that like you did so much. It's like, oh, that's so unusual. And, um, you know, there you are. You find these treasures, put them in your closet or your wardrobe, and then forget yeah. them. you forget I know. them. I'll, I tra- know. I'll trade you this for the necklace. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, it's, a hard, it's a hard choice. That's a, no, that's a pretty necklace. But anyway, the point is, every, I, I interviewed, um, I think it was Dory Jacobson, who's a 85 or something year old fashion ex Playboy bunny. Oh, well, yes, I, I, I follow her. Yeah, and I know her. Uh, she said, you know, I said, how do you choose your, cos- your outfits in the morning when you go to the closet? And she goes, honey, everything in there is me. I can, oh, pick wow. I can pick anything. It's all me. And isn't that the secret? Yeah. Everything in there that, and then use it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, absolutely. Definitely use it. Definitely. I, I read somewhere actually to do with more interior design, but somebody said, well, you know, if you're choosing the objects and you're putting them in your home, every object, because you love it, has something in common with the other objects. And yeah. I think that's very true. Yeah, that's a nice concept. You know, it's a yeah. lovely concept. Lucia yeah. van der Post, I think she writes for Sunday Times or used to. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely concept. And I think that's true of your wardrobe. You know, if you love yeah. it, if you buy it and you love it, and then, yeah, you just wear it and enjoy it. Yeah. You know, wear it. So tell me about some other little things that are in your wardrobe that you, that you pull out when you want to shop your wardrobe, when you don't want to, you don't want to spend any more money on an accessory. What else do you go for? Top sir. Well, um, I think, I think actually another thing that I think is a staple is a lovely, now this one is not, I'm not very good with silk. It all seems to end up with some red wine on it or something. <laughs> so I have to say that that's the one thing I probably don't buy in, in the real fabric, except for the cotton ones. But, you know, if you've got a nice, oh, slightly great. sort of unusual shirt, I mean, that can be, again, the basis of, of your wardrobe. Because What's on the back? Like, What's on the back? Oh, it's got a, yeah, it's got the similar thing at the back, I think. It does that sort of, no, it's just at the front. It has it's the sort of. pretty little detail yeah but it that, that lifts it from the ordinary so you know i think that that can make a difference as well you know so, something that you just reminded me of is um you can have something in your closet but, but by doing just some one or two small things you can transform it like i for example have seen a lot of t-shirts plain ordinary t-shirts with like a pearl button like two or three little buttons oh, on the, yeah someone has you know put on there and it just takes you two well me 10 minutes but a while to sew little buttons on but it changes a black t-shirt into something you could even gather it a little bit you know like that and just put one yes on. just but you can do that by shopping your wardrobe instead of going and spending more money just do something with your if you're good with needle, good with, I used to do so much when I was younger. I think my eyesight isn't too clever now for, for the fine detail. But I bought some little berries in, in, um, you know, in the market in, in winter, and they were just plain gray berry. I think a red one, a gray one. And I had little pearls sewn onto yeah. all the time. And I got so many comments yes. on that berry. You know, where did you get the berry? So it, it's, the, I don't know what it is. It, to me, it's like a painting. It's like, you know, you've got a blank canvas yeah. and what do you want to put on the canvas? How do you want to, to paint, in a way, paint your life? But, you, you know, you're doing that in color when you're putting your clothes on. Yeah, I, that's a lovely image. And, you know, I think that what it does, too, is it helps people get a better um, insight into you. Like when you do yes. that, you're, t- you're saying something about yourself. You're, you're um, non-verbally st- saying, you know, I, when you put that necklace on, or uh, it must certainly say to people, now that's a cool lady. I mean, she likes to show her, you know, she loves flowers and floral and she's a sunny personality and whatever else it says, but it tells them something. 
Don't you think? Oh, totally. I mean, when I was doing image, I did a lot of image in the corporate market. And literally, yeah. you know, these big organizations would, would pay us to run seminars to try and teach. Normally, there's a middle management, particularly salespeople, how quickly people make up their minds about you, oh, yeah. trust or not trust, yeah. two seconds. It's an instinctive response. And then we used to teach a little bit about the psychology of color. Like if you, you know, want to be, if you're uh, giving a presentation in a room full of lots of people, you know, for a man anyway, wear a brightly colored tie, you know, wear something colored because yeah. then, yeah. you know, you'll draw the attention to you and it sends messages. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's got a quite, color has quite a depth behind it, not just the, does it suit you? Does it, you know, make you look brighter and better? That's a whole other video we could That's do. That's a whole other video, yes, a whole <laughs> other conversation. So back but, to the shopping your wardrobe. But I, I think feel, colors need to harmonize, really, ideally. Mm -hmm. But I feel kind of bad for guys because all they've really got is their tie. That's, that's all they can really show well, less personality. I don't, exactly. I don't think they're wearing any of these. No, well, you know, right. Ties have sort of you know, gone a bit out of fashion since I used to teach. Well, I think what you've said here is so powerful, which is to simply, at this point in our lives, enjoy what you've already got because you purchased it because you loved it and it's in your closet. Yes. You, go ahead and play with it and enjoy it and, you know, and don't waste money on stuff that you know you've already got just be playful with clothing and um yeah i think that's true i mean i find i'm the most creative when i'm traveling with a very small case and very few items i can it just makes me more creative because i have no other choice i have to yeah. mix them up in various ways I bet you, I mean, I haven't been on your site recently. I've looked at your, at your scarf page, which is awesome. Yeah, Josephine has a new a shop online now for the scarf she picks up in San Tropez, which is great. But, um, but you also have um, just styling um, issues and styling recommendations. So the whole Chic at Any Age website is more than just, you know, what we've been talking about. So go check it out. Yes. Yeah, I try and, and, and experiment a bit. And I feel I'm experiment for my readers. You know, I'm saying, well, this is on trend. This is how you might wear it. Now, not all of it works for everybody. I mean, I understand that, you know, some people like, you know, the wider trousers, some people don't, you know, but I'm, at least I'm sort of showing them you know, these are the options out here and now you make the choices. Yeah. So this has been re really useful. Any other last minute comments though, for people that are hesitant about sh shopping their, their closet or wardrobe? I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, have a, if, if you haven't worn it for quite some time and you really don't like it, it probably should be donated. Yeah. But, and also don't, you know, keep your wardrobe tidy because otherwise you can't find things if possible. You know, keep them where you can see them because otherwise they get hidden and you forget about them. Yeah. Do the Mary Kondo approach to downsizing. Get it all out and then just put it back in and roll it. Roll, do you roll your clothes? I the, do roll them. I'm not yeah. quite as purist as she is, to be honest. You know, um, I think she's a little bit um, on the strict side. So, <laughs> And I, don't, I can't do it all at once. I find it overwhelming. I like to do it. Certainly seasonally, I'll do it. Yeah. But occasionally I think, oh, I'm not sure. I'll just have a look at that bit or the top saw the knitwear I, I could, i'd get overwhelmed if i did what she did to be perfect. yeah all in the center of the floor <laughs> oh no <laughs> well thank you so much for sharing your insights check out josephine's website everybody you'll love it she's just great to work with she's got Insta instagram page also you've got your website do you have youtube uh, I tried to do scarf ties on YouTube, but technologically, I've got a couple up there. I found, <laughs> found videos quite challenging, but I'm on the case. I'm going to come back to All it. All right. Well, we'll check it out when, we get, when it's there. <laughs> Thank you, Josephine. Have a great day. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Our Patreon supporters help us to make a bigger difference in the lives of women over 60 all around the world. They get exclusive videos, live video shows, discounts, and much more. So please look for the link on this page. It is somewhere down here, up there. <laughs> and join our tribe of women in our 60 and Me community who are actually making a big difference in the world, challenging aging stereotypes. So thank you so much for your support.